Celtics Beat is brought to you by Price Picks and the Game Time app. Woo! Ah, welcome in, everyone. New Celtics Beat and uh, not not much going on since I was last with you. Evan Valenti, he tackled the show last week, so I'm, I'm thrilled to be back here. And I guess we have a little bit of catching up to do. Uh, between, let's see, uh, since we were last on, we had uh, Matt Peralt with us and we were, you know, really breaking down the draft picks and what Boston did, Baylor Shireman, all of that. And uh, since then, let's see, record setting deal as expected for White gets his huge contract extension, so he's on the books. Uh, Summer League is upon us. Our guest, Gary Washburn, who we'll welcome in just a second, is joining us from Las Vegas, getting ready for all of the action there. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, uh, Jalen Brown hates everybody, and uh, the Celtics are for sale. So, no, no, nothing big. If I look like I've got bedhead or something like that, it's actually just me pulling my hair out with what has been happening since this team locked in banner 18. So, welcome again. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Rate, review, all that good stuff. Subscribe, most importantly, to the Celtics Beat Podcast. Just a, just another day at work, huh, Gary? <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's been an eventful off season already, so um, <laughs> a lot going on. But uh, the, the season never stops. It, it never, you know, uh, Vegas is a city that never sleeps, and the NBA is a season that never stops. And yeah, like the sale of the team, and now the whole Team USA stuff, and the extensions, and all that. It's a lot. Uh, you hope things calm down, but as of now, they're not. So we'll see what happens over the next few weeks. So I, I don't think we need to really spend time on Jason Tatum's new contract that was expected and congrats to him earned. I don't even think really we need to break down Derek White's because, uh, you know, that's what everyone has been clamoring for and he got his payday. And so this core that this team has, again, Tatum, Brown, White, Holiday, Porzingis, even Pritchard, uh, Hauser is is potentially going to get paid. Obviously, Al Horford is not retiring just yet. He's going to come back. This team is fully in run it back mode, potentially for multiple seasons. They're all eyes now. We've been so used to for 16 years saying banner 18, banner 18, banner 18. We're going to get used to saying banner 19 now because that is obviously what this team is chasing. What is at stake? But the the big stories, the two really huge stories. Obviously, the sale, which I know you have written about, Gary, in the Boston Globe and online, Boston dot, uh, bostonglobe.com, and also, of course, all the Team USA stuff. Derek White, added to Team USA, gets that final spot after Kawhi Leonard bowed out, and it was Derek White going, not Jalen Brown, a champion like White, but NBA Finals MVP, Eastern Conference Finals MVP. Derek White doesn't have those. Grant Hill coming out, talking about how it's about fit, and Jalen saying that he believes... Uh, you know, in, in cryptic tweet after cryptic tweet that this is a Nike thing. He has been critical of Nike in the past. Team USA, very much a Nike brand, that this is Nike alienating Jalen uh, Brown, that this is, uh, you know, Stephen A. Smith is is taking his victory lap about how Jalen Brown is not liked and is not marketable. And those are among the reasons that Derek White is there. So uh, honestly, Gary, where do you want to start? You want to start Jalen and Team USA or you want to start with the sale? Wow, uh, I think the sale's more boring. But um... <laughs> all right, well let's 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 start uh, let's start Jalen then. So there there are different angles to this. Obviously, there have been people sort of you know deciding how they want to craft the conversation. Is it uh, you know is is Jalen being a bad teammate in his you know really? I, I wouldn't say Adam, he's being I'll, critical. I'll, I'll, I think this is what it is. Okay. Okay. So start there. Yeah. Um... I don't think Jason has Jalen has a problem with Derek White making the team. I think Jalen has a problem with the process that the players were chosen. I think he has more of a problem with Devin Booker. He has more of a problem with Tyrese Halliburton. Guys, he feels like he has accomplished more in this league. Um, and remember, Devin Booker also made the All NBA team over Jalen. Um, and and I do agree with that. I think he's got a legitimate gripe. I like Devin Booker. Devin Booker can put the ball in the hole. But what else does Devin Booker do? He doesn't really, he's not a plus defender. Phoenix was a six seed um, in this season, one of the more disappointing teams in the league. They got swept out of the playoffs. Jalen wins. 
Eastern Conference Finals MVP, NBA Finals MVP, and can't get a sniff. But Booker's an automatic, like, punch. You know, his ticket is punched for the Olympic team. Halliburton, a, a rising star, a, a, you know, uh, a solid player, but also coming off an injury uh, during the Indiana, during the Celtics series, a uh, guy who hasn't accomplished nearly as much as Jalen, his ticket is punched. I think that, that Jalen has an issue with the selection process as a whole. Then a player of Jalen's same position, uh, you could say Jalen is a younger Kawhi. Um, you know, that's, that's asking a lot. I mean, Kawhi is a top 75 player. Then that spot opens and Derek White automatically gets the call and Jalen doesn't do even get a text message. So, yeah, I do think he has a legitimate gripe here. I don't think it's about Derek White. I think it's about the entire process where there was no tryouts. Grant Hill just pick and chose the guys that he wanted. And it's great. He wants Jason. That's Duke. I mean, I can see Jalen. Oh, that's Duke stuff. And obviously, Jason's an Olympian. Jason's an automatic on the team. So is LeBron. So is Steph. So is Joel Embiid. If those guys want to play Olympic and Durant, if those guys want to play Olympic basketball, you're going to put them on the team. So it limits the number of spots. But then, you you know, Drew Holiday, obviously a mainstay, a guy who came off the you know, playing from Milwaukee after winning a title in 21 and helping the Team USA to gold immediately. Remember, he wasn't there when they lost that game to France. He comes and they go undefeated the rest of the way. So he's a, a guy who's a, who cemented on that team. But some of the other decisions I think Jalen had a problem with, especially the one I will just point to, the Devin Booker and to Tyrese Halliburton. And I'm not saying, he, you know, he's got a beef with those guys, but – if you're looking at Booker, Booker averaged 27 points a game. He shot 49 percent from the field. But what else? Like, what? Why is I think he asked? He asked why is Devin Booker this staple on the Team USA? Why does he make All NBA over me? Like, I think that's what Jalen's asking. And then you throw in the Nike situation. Is Nike fueling the choice of the team? Jalen is a shoe free agent. He does not wear Nike. He only wears Nike. He only wears Kobe's. Um, he'll wear Nikes, he'll wear his Kobe's. That's it. He has an issue with Nike um, over them dropping Kyrie Irving a few years ago, things like that. So, do, of course, this thing is political. Of course. I mean, it's been like that. Look at um, look at the 216 team with the women's side where Candace Parker, I think, came off WNBA MVP, won a title. Gino didn't, Gino didn't choose her for, for the – national team and the Olympic team in Rio. Uh, people still ask about that. This thing is political. I mean, and for Grant Hill, they're, well, you know, we know it's matchups and all that. You know, okay, great. And Derek White's a great fit. He's not going to complain about playing time. He's not going to pout. I remember seeing guys like Jimmy Butler and Draymond Green in the last Olympic. I think it was the Rio Olympics kind of Jimmy Butler was just kind of not engaged because he wasn't playing much. He was that 10th or 11th guy. And that, that's, that happens, you know, some of these guys have big egos and Jalen has an ego is just as much as anybody else does. But I think he's more upset with the selection process. There were no tryouts. There were no chance for guys to make an impression one-on-one, -on -one. you know, let him hoop to get his spot out as, a, as opposed to, Hey, Devin Booker, Hey, Tyrese Halliburton, like, I think he's asking, well, why Halliburton, like, you know, over Dame, over like, is because he's a rising, you know, like some of the some of the decisions on this team, Bam Adebayo was not good in, in, in Tokyo. He was not good in Tokyo um, on that team. He automatically got in. Like, and I'm not saying nothing against Bam. Bam might be great this time. He's a he's one of the league's top big men. But I think Jalen definitely has an issue with the selection process. He feels like he's being slighted once again. He looks at the all NBA team. He looks at all these things, these awards and all that. And he's like, what, what have I done? And it's probably because he's been vocal. It is political without question. Ev, listen, I, I, I see, you know, I see political decisions being made at the youth sports level in my town. So I'm certainly not sitting here and doubting that it happens at the Team USA level. I completely agree with everything that you just said, Gary. But is Jalen, I sort of going, going about his frustration in the right way? 
to I where know you know it's, it, yeah there's tweets it's, the cryptic tweets he probably needs to have a conversation with Derek White eventually um it puts Jason Tatum in a tough position but really I, I I I think Jalen had been waiting for this call the opportunity to play for Team USA he played for for the 19 team and nobody was good in the 19 world they they finished <laughs> seventh like that team yeah. just that team was not good and Jason got hurt you know it was Kimba it was Marcus uh, a lot of other guys, they just underachieved. They, that was not a good run, um, an impression. But that was also five years ago. So I, I just think Jalen has a problem with the process. I think he looks at certain guys in the league who have been handed or gifted all-star status, and he's thinking to himself, why not? What's wrong with me? What have, what have I done? And then he's coming off NBA Finals MVP, Eastern Conference Finals MVP, Shut down defense on Luca. So you're telling me I'm not a good defender now, okay? You're telling me Devin Booker is a better fit, or De- like no, not nothing against Devin Booker, but I think that's the problem. That's the guy he's probably pointing to and saying, "How come they're about the same age? Came in the league around the same time. How come um, he's a locked in without question, and I'm on the I'm on the, I'm on the window. I'm a, I'm steaming up the window." Uh, outside the candy store because I can't, you know, like I can't get even, I can't even get in, and I just think that that's what his issue is. And 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 to me, I do agree with with some of that. Now his methods, the cryptic tweets, uh, yeah, could be handled better. Does he need to have conversations with Jason and probably and Derek to make it say, hey man, it's not personal. I just don't understand it. I think, and who knows, they might have already had those conversations. Um, but I do think he's got a legitimate gripe. We'll get right back to the show, but have to tell you about uh, a good friend of the program, good friend of the CLNS Media Network, as a matter of fact. That's Game Time, who, of course, powers this show. Game Time, it makes getting tickets even faster, even easier. Prices on the Game Time app, they actually go down, if you didn't know this, closer to tip off with basketball or whatever it may be. And with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, which I know I care about, my kids definitely care about, the lowest price guarantee. It's all significant in game time. It has it all, just makes it easy for you. It takes the guesswork out of buying any type of ticket. And there are definitely different times of that you could hop in. There are last minute deals. You could save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, which I love. Got to love going to see stand up, theater, whatever it may be. Flash deals kind of in the same vein. You could save even more with exclusive in app deals on select seats ahead of a game or an event. Kaufman, I think it's a game changer for sporting events, like period, right? Like, because, you know, I, I hear this all the time. The, the price of sporting events is astronomical. Totally understand that. But if you're willing to wait a little bit for the game to actually start, just hop around a game time, baby, and get an actual uh, a sporting experience that's way more affordable. Are you talking up to 60% off tickets as soon as the game starts? Let me tell you, folks, there's a lot of game left. Ever hear that before? It happens to be one of my favorite sayings when it comes to any sporting event. When anybody takes an early lead, we'll have that as a part of your purchasing experience with game time. Get this, too. Lowest price guarantee. Or game time will credit you 110% of. How do you lose? It's, you don't. I mean, it's it's like free money. Let me tell you. Impossible. Take the guesswork out of it. Buy tickets with game time. Download the game time app. Create an account. Use the code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem the code. It is CLNS. That is CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price guaranteed yeah i think he's looking for a little validation here you know it's like hey like and one of the things that i really enjoyed was when he was awarded the nba finals mvp trophy he looked legitimately shocked that he got this award and then you can argue over who was supposed to get i mean who i don't really care at this point he got the award it was given to him and he looked legitimately thrilled shocked that he was given this award and then to, to back up what you said I'm looking at guys, and I'm not trying to clown on like anybody, but you know, Ant's a young guy. He's great. I'm not saying he's not great. And of course, there's all over stuff today I, that you know is Ant the guy. I'm not going to even have those conversations. But Ant's young. He's 22 years old. He'll he's going to be 
pretty great, but is it too early for him? Uh, you know, Devin Booker got to the finals one time and last year was a giant disappointment. Again, he just beat Tyrese Halliburton in a series. Now Tyrese didn't play the whole time. I, I get his frustration. It seems like he's always looking for that validation and just never feeling sort of contempt enough. Like he's talked about it. Like, I know I'm not going to get what I deserve in terms of the awards and things. He's talked about that, but it feels like this is a, a, a bigger point of contention for him. And especially when you look at when Tatum came back from the last Olympics with a gold medal in his hand, he let Jalen Brown kind of celebrate with us. That famous, you know, that famous photo, I think at a nightclub where Tatum's with him and Jalen's got the medal in his hand. He's thrilled as, as he could be for his teammate. I, I I feel his frustration and I don't even have a problem with him being vocal about it. Yeah, sure. It puts Tatum in an awkward situation and it puts Derek White in, a, in an awkward situation. But at the same time, it's like, is he not one of the best 15 guys in the NBA at this game? If he, if he is, then he deserves to be on that team. Like he does. He deserves to be there. He deserves to have all the stuff that's supposed to go along with being a superstar in the NBA. So I don't have any problem with any, any of the way that he's handled this. He he's allowed to speak his mind. He's allowed to have questions about things. And I think it's a little unfair that he's not on the team. I, 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 I fully back him on this. And when you look at this team, USA team, you have certain guys that do certain roles, but Gary, wouldn't you want a guy that's like versatile can play, up can play down in terms of offense and defense. I mean, I'd want him and Derek to be honest. Like, I think Derek fills a great role defensively, and Derek can score, and Derek can block shots, and Derek can run the floor. And he's not going to complain when he doesn't play. And it could be a chemistry thing, but it, it, it's it, the decisions were hard, much more difficult than years past because you had LeBron coming back, you had KD who's like, okay, I'll go one more run. And then you had Curry, who's never been on an Olympic team, saying, yeah, I want to try it. So you've got three players who are over th- her 35 and over on this team, which is rare. And then you've got Embiid, who just decides he's got his citizenship. Now he wants such four spots that are locked. OK, so now you talk about eight spots. And that's where I think Jalen feels like, you know, Tatum. OK, so that's seven spots. You want to put him in there. Holiday, now that's six spots, you know. Uh, that's the thing. So you, you, you now you're down to six spots, and you Ant Ant Man. I think Ant Man is a rising star. I think they want him to be the face of the league, and I think this is kind of like a hint, like okay, Ant, like this is your shot. Here you go. I just think, as I repeated, it is Halliburton and it is Devin Booker. I think he's looking like what? What do I need to do? What has Halliburton done? In their different positions, he's a point guard. What's Halliburton done or what's Devin Booker? What's Devin Booker done besides score? Okay. Besides score the ball, prolific score, probably is going to have his number retired in Phoenix. Great. Um, hasn't won a title, lost in the first round, got swept, like with that big three with Durant. Like, so you got two members, we got two members of the Phoenix Suns on this team. And, you know, the team that lost in the first, like it, 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 some of his, and, and then you got Grant Hill, who might have something. It might be personal. I'm not talking about he doesn't like Jalen. It might just be like, I don't think he's going to be a good fit chemistry-wise. I don't. We don't need someone in Paris speaking on all these political issues and, and keeping it real and talking about Thomas and, 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 and the situation in Palestine. Like, it could be that, too, where it's just like, we just need ball players. And Derek, you know, Derek's a good guy. Derek is a all shucks kind of guy. Jalen's not an all shucks Hmm. kind of guy. And it could be, I I do think there's something inside Jalen's membership, you know, his defense of Kyrie Irving, um, his embrace of the Muslim religion. I think there's a lot of things on this, on this thing. That's not necessarily hoop that has kept Jalen off this team. And I also think it is some kind of, like, you don't even let him try out. You don't have a camp. Or you don't even call Jalen. Like, to me, I, I, I think he's got a gripe. I think legitimately, and I said the Devin Booker, and I like Devin Booker, but I don't know. You tell me, what does he bring to the table besides scoring? I You know, does he defend well? Does he rebound? He shoots very good from the field. He's a, almost a 50% shooter, and he can score. We all know that. How did that work out this year in Phoenix? It was an abject failure. It was a disaster. We all know that. Um, 
And so you just hand him a spot, and then Jalen's like, and then Kawhi, and I'm sure he's upset. Like, you put Kawhi on this team, and from the jump, Kawhi misses most of the playoff series with Dallas, and you just give him a spot too, knowing he's not healthy. Jalen's like, okay, like, if Kawhi's 100% in and healthy, that's a different story. You put a Kawhi, you put an injured Kawhi in here over me, and then you take him out, and you don't even call me up to, to, to replace him. I think he's got a gripe. The Kawhi thing is weird. What was going on there? Why did they, they knew he's not healthy. He's going to come back from missing the playoffs in late April, early May, and come back, what, six weeks, eight weeks later and be 100%? And, and play and all these, like, no, everybody knew, like, why is he here? Not talent-wise, but we all know Kawhi's not healthy. And so what happened? He's like, that's a that's Grant Hill. Like, what what, what is he doing? Now, like, I think Grant Hill's a respectable guy, but, you know, a Hall of Famer, a guy, you know, but it, it, it's getting, it's getting weird. And I just think Dalen notices that. And says, like, hey, I've got much respect for Kawhi. Kawhi's a Hall of Famer, first ballot. He's a great player, but we all know his injury history. And you just give him a spot. And so I think – but I also think it's political. I also think it's, you know, Jalen's going to get on this international stage. You don't know what he's going to say. Um, it's a lot. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there, there's a lot here, obviously, especially when some people like to look at Jalen Brown as either Kawhi 2.0 or a poor man's Kawhi or whoever that, you know, when when you're looking fit for fit, OK, you're you're getting rid of Kawhi or he's bowing out. Why wouldn't you go with a guy who has a very similar skill set in Jalen Brown? And so I get everything that we've been talking about in terms of why he's pissed and he should be pissed. I think this conversation is completely different, maybe not on the Stephen A level with the little feud that those two have going on. But in terms of the like Richard White, Derek's dad, you know, tweeting at the the end of the day after those Jalen cryptic tweets a couple of days ago, like, you know, rough day on Twitter on, on the app or whatever, like, let's all try and be better tomorrow. I think it just becomes awkward when he's reacting the way that he is reacting publicly after his teammate was selected, as opposed to you know, player X on another team entirely. And another no, part that we didn't even. It's awkward. I do think it's awkward, but I also think he probably felt like, let's be honest, Kawhi, what was it like? The Kawhi stuff broke at like 10 o'clock in the morning and Derek was on the yeah. team by 1 p.m. Right. So like, was there any calls? Was there a Zoom call? <laughs> was there a text message? Yeah, was there any consideration at all? We yeah. knew, but we knew Derek White was a replacement weeks ago. They had already yes. it's out that Derek White was going to be the replacement. Oh, I'm, I'm at, I think Jalen's asking wh why, and I think yeah. Jalen's well, asking why wouldn't I chosen over Kawhi? If Kawhi, we all know and we all knew the chance of Kawhi making it through this thing healthy was slim to none. Everybody knew that mm. he's coming off an injury and whatever a mysterious knee injury. Everybody watched it. You know, like we all knew, is Kawhi really going to play here? You know, is, that, is he going to go through all this, the, the ups and downs and these physical practices and the games against the USA Select team? Like, so, yeah, I think it's awkward, but I think he's, you know, I don't know. Like, I think he obviously needs to have a conversation with Derek White Hat to say, Derek, it's not personal. I'm just bad about the process. I don't think, oh, it's going to affect chemistry now. They're going to be all mad at each other going to, they're not going to repeat, it's going to stop them repeating. No, but I do think Jalen is just like saying to himself, once again, I, 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 I can't get the respect I deserve. I've been in the league eight years, three all star teams with two, three all star teams, um, all NBA a couple of years ago, highest paid player in the league. I back it up this year. Everybody talked about I can't take care of the ball, my decision making. Um, I can't go left, all this stuff. Yeah. He shuts it down, shuts, you know, good defense on Luca, wins Easter Conference, that block on, saved them in the series, hit that three in game one, scored 40 in game two, that block on Nimhard, and like he basically won them the NA, although Jason was good too, uh, the Indiana series. 
Mm -hmm. Come back, do it again. You know, they didn't stop Luca, but made things difficult on Luca, where Luca was not that 35 and 18 assists and 12 rebounds and all. Like, he wasn't that guy. And he still can't get a call. <laughs> like, like, I think it's, it's, he's got a gripe. It's, it's, he's got a point. It's awkward. Derek, I don't think we'll take it personally. Um, you know, Derek's a good guy, and I'm sure that they'll have a conversation about it. But I just think Jalen's tired of the system. This system that says you have to be a Nike person, you have to cooperate. And now, Curry's not Nike, neither is Joel and B and, and Ant Man's Adidas. So it's not necessarily that, but there's somebody or something telling Grant Hill, stay away from this guy. I, that's what I believe. Yeah, I mean, look, there's Derek is Derek's the ultimate underdog story. He's your cousin from Boston. He's the Celtics with the balls hat when he announces his new contract. He's the like he's everything that Luke Cornett wants to be at, at the highest of NBA levels, you know, in in a, a great, you know, obviously very well paid package at this point in time. I don't think they're going to have an issue. I agree with you. I guess to, if we rather than going in circles on this conversation with, you know, if we're projecting this ahead from a Celtics fan standpoint, so certainly not Jalen's standpoint, but a Celtics fan standpoint, could some of this stuff be good for the team? Like this is obviously going to create yet another chip on Jalen's shoulder. You know, Jason Tatum, and I'm not saying at all that he wasn't happy for Jalen getting those two MVP awards, but you know, him not winning either of those when he obviously had a case in in both, you know, another little chip on his shoulder, you know, go, going into next year. The the fact that this team, some people are already going to be a little, uh, not doubt them, they're the championship favorites, but a little skeptical. Can they repeat? What are they going to look like when there's no Chris Stapps Porzingis for half the year, probably? Uh, you know, is, can some of this stuff in terms of Jalen, Jason, elevating their games at, at yet another level actually be good for this team. Yeah. I think the motivation will be there. Um, and I think Jalen will prove it on the, on the basketball court. And so will Jason, I think they will be fired up and motivated. And obviously as we've seen over the last couple of weeks, teams like the Sixers and the Knicks are coming after them, making these, making these major moves, Oklahoma city in the West. Um, so I do think that they'll, they'll be playing motivation and I think they'll be fine by the time late September comes and they're getting ready for training camp. This is July. It's two, it's two and a half months away from camp. Um, this is the hot topic now. Basically, there's nothing going on in sports. Like, you know, whenever there's the, when, when the ESPYs come, we all know that they're just, you know, in the middle of the summer, there ain't nothing going on. And, all the, and congrats to Jalen on his ESPY award. Yeah, that's way. great for him. The Major great League consolation Baseball, prize, I'm sure. Yeah, the All-Star game is coming up. Whoop de doo to that. The 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 socks are kind of making a run, and we're all gonna discuss over the next few weeks whether they're gonna make a move and add to this team. But and then obviously in a couple of weeks, training camp opens up, and we're looking forward to the Jokobi Brissett era. Like, is that the hey, that's that sounds fun. <laughs> um so you know, there's not a lot going on right now. There just isn't. And then the Olympics will take center stage um, beginning in a couple of weeks, obviously when everybody mm -hmm. gets to Paris and, and the, the tournament begins. So I just think this is the hot story right now. And I think, you know, they're the U team USA is going to move on. Jailer's going to have to move on. Um, and I just think it's a cold, obviously a cold news week, but um, I think two and a half for months from now, when conversations are had, um, I think they'll be fine. Here's my question. You, you kind of, tap dance on this earlier talked about a little bit earlier obviously this puts jason tatum in a really weird situation where he has to talk about this publicly he did talk about it a little bit yesterday how do you think he handled that uh okay poorly yes i think uh, you know he was kind of like uh well and if i'm jason i probably text Jalen and go hey man you good or something that might have been what jason could have done uh, but it's not jason's responsibility to do that that's probably what I would have done. Hey, man, you okay? You know, you should be here. Just give him some reinforcement. Um, and, and, you know, but I think Jason's kind of going, you know, I think Jason is in the the, the kind of the, hey, I'm happy to be here. All these dudes that I've dreamed of playing with, LeBron and 
KD and all that. I'm, I'm, I'm living the life right now, so I got nothing to be mad about. So it's hard to ask him, do you think Jalen should be on this team? Like, and Jason's just, Jason's just happy. You know, he's coming off the bench. He's, you know, probably one of the better players in the team. He was very good in the Canada game. So, and I don't know if that's Jason's nature to, to, to turn around and be like, well, yeah, Jalen should be, you know, to go at Grant Hill. Grant Hill's, I'm sure, a, a role model. The Duke cop There, tied. there are a couple ways to do that, though. Like, I, I you know, with... Like he he did his his one on one with Malika Andrews the other day, and she you know she put him on the spot. Fun question said, you know who like if if your Celtics team that just won the championship was was going up against your Team USA right now, who wins? And you know he answered that the way that every Celtics fan would want him to. He said, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll with the guys that I just played ten months of basketball with, and you know had a, an incredible year. Like I I take that too. so that's great. That's a that's obviously a Feather in the cap of the hometown team. I I just think like he just and he's terrible in these situations historically. Anytime he has been in these types of situations, he handles it. I think that like you said okay. I said poorly. I think it's okay at best. When all he re- like he doesn't have to go at Grant Hill. He can just say, listen, like Jalen's an incredible player. He deserves to be here. So does Derek. And it's hard. There are only so many spots and. You know, my like my heart goes out to Jalen. That's kind of what he said, but he didn't around. mention. Yeah, he didn't go. With, yeah, like he could have said just, like that. He was just like, uh, yeah, uh, like he didn't really say anything. Yeah, there's a lot of there's limited was, spots. A lot of guys, right? A lot of guys who like who could be here. Yeah, I speak like he he could have shouted out Jalen a little bit, and I'm not saying there's friction between them or anything like that. He just could have handled it a little bit better yeah, without being controversial toward Grant. I agree. Or he could. Privately, just send a text to Jalen and go, hey, man, you know, you didn't, you got done wrong. I'm with you. Don't, you know, like support each other in this situation, you know, yeah. and then support Derek too, because Derek's happy to be there. He's in Colorado at a kid's camp and then suddenly gets the call. So he's just, he's flying from Colorado. Now I think he's, you know, probably in um, Dubai with them now. I think they just landed there, um, and you know, for these exhibition games. So, you know, kudos to Derek. He deserves it too. I'm not. There's nothing against Derek White. I think he's done a great job. I think he's a great player. But I do think it's pretty evident. And could Stephen A. Like you said, he's taking a victory lap. Um, it could be something personal about Jalen. Perhaps his attitude. Perhaps Team USA not wanting to put him on that on that stage, that international stage, where he can say whatever he wants about whatever he wants. You know, I was in Nigeria. I was in um, Nigeria. I was in Japan, and uh, Chimizi Chimizi Metu, who played the NBA, mm-hmm. literally laid for Nigeria. Literally laid out the Nigerian basketball uh, committee for for making them fly, uh, like do a ten hour layover in Germany to save money. Like he literally during a press conference in Japan laid out the Nigerian basketball committee for basically saving money and, and penny pinching uh, for his having him sit in the hotel lobby because they couldn't check it. Like he literally laid them out and it made Nigeria look terrible. Like you can't, you know, you're sending these guys to the Olympics and you can't even give them first class accommodations. You're just, you're, you know, you're flying from whatever Lagos, Nigeria to Japan through Germany with a 10 hour layover or something just to save money. Like, and he laid it out, right? And I always remember that because some of these guys, when they get on that stage and they know the international media is there and they're going to speak their mind because they don't care. And I think Jalen is at that point, like, I don't care what you think of me. I'm going to speak my mind. Nothing Team USA is probably afraid of that. You know, they are probably yeah. afraid of you putting a political person, a person who has been socially active, a person who's spoken his mind before on that stage where everybody else is going to be, you know, doing this and, hey, hey I'm, uh, I love Paris and all that. That's not Jalen. And I think he understands that and understands that they're they're probably afraid of me. 
All right, one quick break from the show. We'll get right back to it, I promise. I know you are eager, but I got to tell you, today's show, it is powered by Prize Picks, the official daily fantasy partner of CLNS Media. Prize Picks is America's number one, number one, numero uno daily fantasy sports app, over 5 million active members. Prize Picks, it's the easiest, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Not like other apps, it's just you against the numbers. Truly, it is that simple. All you do is you pick more or less on two to six player stat projections, and you watch the winnings roll in. You can now win up to 100 times your money, as a matter of fact, on prize picks. With as little as four correct picks, you can turn $10 into $1,000. So with the finals over, I know, bummer, obviously, that we don't have more NBA basketball for a little while, unless you want to include Summer League. That's right around the corner. The hoops action doesn't stop with prize picks because we have got the WNBA as well. And that season is just barely underway. We got loads more games, opportunities to watch rookies like Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, some of the vets out there who are going to be representing the country on the Olympic team, that U.S. dominant squad getting started soon. And, uh, you know, with with many of these players available to you, you don't have to just fade basketball. You can stick with it, Ev, and you can win up to 100 times your cash by watching them ball out. Of course, you know, you can do other things too. I'm not saying the WNBA is... Not a place to make some some money for sure, but there's other things that we can look at on Prize Picks. I talked about golf at once. I'm going to talk about baseball here. One of my favorite uh, uh, things you can play uh, on Prize Picks is the hitter fantasy score. Right, so it's a little different, a little unique. As an example, you add up all the things that happen during the the hitters at bat, whoever you pick. Uh, Mm -hmm. their game log, for example. Like if they hit a single, it's three points. Doubles, five. Triples, eight. Home runs, ten. A run batted in is two. If there are runs scored, it's two points. A walk hit by pitch, those are both two. Stolen base, Jaron Duran, killing it right Mm -hmm. now on the base bats. Uh, Those are worth five points. So you look at the daily hitter fantasy score, right? Look at that. Say, you know, is it going to be above or below that number? And if you're like, wow, this guy's due for X, then maybe we want to pick more or like, ah, this guy's in a slump right now. They want to pick less. It's that simple, that easy. Log on a price fix, make it happen, Kaufman. Here's the thing. You can't do any of what I've just said. You can't do any of what I just said if you don't download the app. you got to download the Prize Picks app. Do it today. Use the code CLNS. Again, code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, code CLNS on Prize Picks. Deposit match up to $100. Bucks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Let's get back to the show. So while we've got a little bit of time left, uh, you know, I was talking about this story versus the sales story. And you said the, you know, the sale is is the more boring story. Uh, you know, I, I think it's certainly the less salacious story, but I personally, and easy for me to say, I'm not the one covering it and, and writing about it like you are really digging in. I don't find it boring at all because I, I just think the element of this, of you know, one, there's the projecting ahead to the future. And is the next owner, is this going to lead to a teardown? What does this mean in terms of the cap and the team and the future and all of that stuff versus, you know, this team, a, a dedicated fan driven ownership group, obviously, that cares about rings and banners and and wants to do this each and every year. At least that's what we've let, been led to believe and sort of the proofs in the pudding. And and if Wick is staying on as, as you know, governor through 2028, there will be no uh, quick changes here. But the the fascinating thing to me, Gary, and I don't know if you felt the same way when all this started to break, is that it is the family trust and and they're getting their, you know, Irv Grosbeck, Wick's dad, you know, the 90 year old Stanford professor is, you know, getting his uh, every, it, it, estate in line in the, you know, for the future here is obviously, uh, you know, he's only got so many years left, hopefully, uh, you know, quite a few, but again, he's 90. Uh, you know, I, I just think everyone, I don't know about you again, who is someone that is, is in much closer and deeper than like Evan is, or I am, or our listeners are, but I had zero idea that this wasn't actually Wick's ownership. And that this this was the family's and really his dad's. I didn't even know Wick had siblings that were involved in this process. I thought this was Wick's baby. He was the owner or co-owners, he always likes to say, and governor, obviously. And that, you know, it, it really the like the interview that you listened to with CNBC the other day, it it sounds like he is, you know, being put in a position by his family where 
you know, this doesn't actually belong to you and we are selling it even if you are unhappy about it. Am I reading that wrong or is that how you feel about this? No, I think that's a correct situation. I think the family, um, because he has three siblings, is going to have to figure out what to do and probably uh, Irv Grosbeck is decided to kind of cash out and just split it amongst his children. You can't just, I mean, I don't, he's not going to hand the Celtics to Wick and go, okay, Wick, you handle everything. So it's, it, I think it's reluctantly. And remember, I don't know if Wick has children. The, the question is whether the Celtics want, the Grosbecks want to keep this in the family like the Roonies or like a, other family. The crafts. Uh, yeah, the crafts <laughs> where they're like, hey, hands down, hands, but we don't see a lot of group specs working in the, this is not the, the the Cowboys where Jerry's like Godson is damn near the general, like, you know, the whole Jones family is working in the organization at high level positions, you know, we talk about nepotism, no. you know, every time you look at the Dallas Cowboys, it's, it's Jerry's, you know, Jerry's all his whole family, you know, his, his you know, I'm sure his niece and auntie and, 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 you know, <laughs> And I'm sure his 16 year old nephew's probably director of scouting or something like that. Um, you know, the whole Joe's family, this is not the, the case. So I think it's a situation where they have to. And then also, if you look at the, the worth of the team, it, it will never be higher after winning a championship. And then you're, we're entering the era of the second apron where the Celtics will play, pay up, upwards of $200 million in taxes, luxury taxes. Um, there's a lot. And I think Wick probably and Wick's father probably said, let's break this up and let's, you know, let's cash out. And and that's not his decision because obviously I think I think people on the inside knew Wick is the face of the organization, but he's not the money man. It's his father. Uh, I think we I think a lot of people on the inside have known that like Wick, Wick's money comes from his father. And that happens a lot. A lot of the, these primary guys who are front men are not necessarily the money men. They're just the more most charismatic of the ownership group or the one that you, you know, we'll pay the money. You speak for us. And I think that that's- You said at the inside, I think that was publicly a shock. Yeah, I, I do think, so I do, I think it's a family trust issue. And I don't think Rick wants to sell the team. He loves it, but it's also not his decision. His father is still very much act. I think still professor at Stanford and, 89, 90 years old. So it's not like his dad is losing it or his dad somehow mentally slipping. It's just a decision probably with siblings who probably don't want to be involved in the business. Now, if, if his four kids all decided, dad, we want to continue this, then I think we're, it's all good. But that's probably not the issue. Wick is the only one involved. So it gets where it gets. I'm not saying it, it to me, it's kind of boring because we don't know what's going to happen. And we're like, what if some guy comes, you know, a trillionaire buys the team, like some guy from Saudi Arabia, like, you know, anything could happen at this point. Um, and, you know, I do think a certainty is whoever buys this team will want to build a new arena because that's where the money is. Look, look at Steve Ballmer. Steve, it took him 10 years, but Steve Ballmer, it's like we gotta get the hell out of this this situation at the Staples Center where we're playing Saturday afternoon games because we're third fiddle to the Lakers and the Kings. We need our new own spot, and that's a revenue maker is having your own arena. So if I'm the new owner of the Celtics, I'm coming in and saying, where the hell can we build a new arena? Because as much as TD Garden, it's a nice arena. It's not a bottom 10 arena. It's not a top 10 arena. It's probably in the middle of the pack in terms of amenities. It was, it's fine. It, it is not a, like a, a band by, it's not a, like, it's not getting, you know, y'all, man, it's like, it's, you guys have been there. It's a nice yeah, it's arena. It's been around they, a long time. So it's, yeah, they, long they, time, they, it's, but it's also 30 years old in a, in a technological age where that is, that is like a hundred years old for yeah. arenas. I mean, let's like, the Texas Rangers built a new stadium. Like, how long was there the like they're they're not at Globe Life anymore, right? Like, or whatever that stadium was, like they literally was in were in a was in a, a stadium for like 22 years. And they built another one. Like, that's crazy. Like, you know, like like this is what's happening. And now people are gonna look at that new Intuit arena in LA. 
And so the garden is going to be become more and more antiquated as years go on. I think their their lease is 10 years. So if I'm the new owner, I'm coming in saying, where can we build another arena? And because you're basically handing your money to the Bruins who own the arena. So mm-hmm. that's going to be an interesting aspect. I don't I I said it's boring because now we're talking about family trusts and and numbers and second aprons and all that. Like <laughs> I don't think you know, do the viewers, do the listeners, do you young Celtic fans really care about family trusts and all that? I don't think that you know, I think they're like just tell another rich guy to buy the team and pay everybody so we can win more championships. I think that's what the fans are saying. Like, no. Well, unless I say to those fans, Hey, it's John Henry, which I don't believe it is. Please. Well, you know, me. what kind of reputation Please. does he no, have around like, here? You know what I mean? Just, just don't, have, you know, I think people are, I think people are a little, a little bit, you know, wounded from watching clipped and think, Oh, don't let Donald, <laughs> some Donald Sterling type come in here and, and buy this team and cut, cut costs and, Make us turn us into the Charlotte Hornets. I don't think that'll happen. I think if you if you're paying five billion for a team, you got to have a lot of money. Like you know, this is not you, you're not doing patchwork stuff here. You got to have you got to have the collateral uh, to spend five billion on the Celtics. So, but if I'm the new owner, I think the first thing they do is where the hell can we build a new arena? Whether it be some people, are, oh Somerville, oh near the casino. Can you build a new arena near the waterfront like the the Warriors owners did where they built Chase Center? People said there was no way you could build. It was too expensive, crazy. They did it. Um, you know, that's the question. I think once the team is purchased, where the hell they're going to play uh, for the next 30 years after their lease is up? Well, because that's what we need. We need more, we need more construction. Oh, bad. Awesome. Go ahead, up. We need more construction in Boston. That's what we really need. I think that's exactly. what we need. a whole new, yeah, right at the waterfront. I, I mean, the Seaport. Uh, Big oh, dig. Right to Seaport. 6.0. That's why, I mean, I think that'd be great. But, you know, the, to me, that's where the money is. So that's where the interesting part of this story is. But, like, Wick's family trust and, you know, who owns who, what percent, I think that's kind of boring at this point. We all just know we all know he's selling a team. He probably doesn't want to sell a team. Does Paliuka have the capital? I Why? mean, Paliuka. I mean, them and Bain. Uh, Bain Capital still has uh, some some stakeholders in this thing. Maybe they can rally, you know, rally a couple. Yeah, of that's them. the thing. You hope Paliuka can come up with the money or the investors or the partners. Now, I think who wouldn't want to own the Celtics? Right. There's there's not a lot of bombers out there, but there are a couple of eccentric guys out there that just want to own a ball team and would mm-hmm. love it. And, you know, and it's not a money making proposition. It's just not it's you break even at best, but you're in the spotlight. So I'm sure another Mark Cuban or another bomber could emerge. And, and we don't know who this person is yet, man, woman, whoever it is. We don't know. But I think that's the fascinating part, too. I mean, since uh, anything to add? Yeah, I mean, well, no. Since he's in Vegas, and we have the the, the summer league Celtics coming up here, what's the what yeah. storyline, or what player, or what are you most looking forward to while you're out there? Besides Bronny James, maybe playing for the Lakers at some point. Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> um, sucks. I mean, this team is pretty actually pretty good. Five players last year who actually played in a Celtic uniform or Jaden Springer, Drew Peterson, J.D. Davidson, Namius Kata. Um, and I can't remember the the fourth, the fifth. Jordan uh, Walsh, baby. Jordan Walsh. Yeah, sorry, our yeah. friend Jordan Walsh. And yeah. then you got uh the two draft picks, Shireman and, and Anton Watson. And then you got uh the kid, the son of Ron Harper Jr., and you got Eddie House. Eddie House is Jalen. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing him. I'm sure he's gonna drop drop. I'm sure Eddie will be down here to watch some games, and I'm sure he that's my MF and son. When he drops yeah. some threes and when he <laughs> win a game or something. Um, so it, it sounds like a deep team. It's just, it's just you want guys like I need to see honestly about two guys, Drew Peterson and, and Jaden Springer. Peterson, is he a kind of a guy who can eventually maybe replace Sam Hauser? And Jaden Springer, is there a reason he's occupying a roster spot? And does he have potential to help this team down the road? I think. They need to take a step forward. I think J.D. Davidson, um, you know, it's he, he's one of those cases where he came out of college probably 
two years too early. He's just working himself into being maybe on a fringe of an NBA, an NBA player. So he'll get a third chance at a two-way contract. I think he's comfortable in the Celtic system and they want to see him flourish. So we'll see. Those guys need to be the best players on the floor. Kata, I don't know how much he'll, he'll actually play, well, but I do think it's good to see him in the system. And Jordan Walsh, we'll see it too, but he's kind of going in a year or two of probably a three to four year kind of development process to see if he'll help in the, as this team gets older, or sorry, not gets older, when guys like Horford and guys leave, can Walsh be that kind of guy who's ready to, to step in and play a role maybe in two years? Like Gary said, the basketball season, it never stops. We're going to let him take at least a couple-minute break before he does whatever he is doing out there getting ready to cover the summer league seas in Vegas. But, Gary, always appreciate when you take some time for us and uh, breaking everything down You know, from the – uh, Melrose place like drama that we have involving Jalen Brown to the sale and everything. I mean, this Celtics team, we should still be basking in a championship. Instead, it is just, it's forget nope. it. That doesn't happen, nope. I guess, in 2024. <laughs> you can get Gary on Twitter at uh, G Washburn Globe. And of course, check out all of his work in the Boston Globe. Gary, thanks so much. Jason, I also have a, uh, I wanted to plug my book. I have a book called, uh, coming out called The Boston Celtics and Illustrated Timeline. Uh, awesome. 175 moments from the history of the Celtics. So it's not, it, it, it will, it touches on the championship. So you, you're going to get pictures and vignettes about the title team and all the way Missoula and all. So the good times and some of the, the not so good times of the history of the franchise detailing all the championships. So if you don't know a lot about the history of the franchise or guys like Jojo White and Dave Callens and, um, Tom Heinsohn and Lasky and Frank Ramsey are only names you've all heard. We talk about all those pivotal figures in the history of the franchise, as well as all the stuff all the way until title 18. So don't, it's going to include all the good stuff. Um, so yeah, go, it's on Amazon. It's coming out in a couple of weeks. Awesome. Um, Boston sells the illustrated timeline. So thanks for letting me uh, say that. Without a doubt. No, when it comes out, we'll uh, we'll check it out. Have you back on the show to talk more about it, too, once we've had the chance to, uh, you know, scroll through it. it uh, that's awesome. I'm excited. I, I love these, uh, you know, it's I, I use the word commemorative. That's not the right word. But these books that, you know, encapsulate the the history of a franchise and and not just obviously. I mean, there are a lot of great books that, that do a great job on a singular season uh, as well, especially one that the Celtics, you know, like the one the Celtics just experienced. But uh ones that go all the way back through i'm i'm pumped to check that out so thank you for mentioning that as well and uh yeah absolutely check out uh gary's work uh, both boston globe and search amazon for the new book and check that out in a couple of weeks for evan valenti i am adam kaufman and uh shout out to the dude who i ran into at the pool the other day who turns out is a huge celtics beat fan uh lo love you for listening thank you so much we'll uh talk to you again real soon